Hello. Hi. My name is Rahul Mohan and uh, well, I'm an automotive designer and I'm a student also. So if you see the theme, it's not automotive design, it's being less robotic. But before I go to that, first I'll give you a little bit hint of automotive design and then I'll jump into UX. So this is a little bit about me and I've, do I've done my undergraduation in automotive design from DYPDC, beautiful college. It's in Pune uh, amongst the mountains and it's near the defense area. So every morning I get up from this fighter jet sounds, you know, it's amazing. And below that, uh, below that it's, uh, that's Arc Automotive. Uh, after, uh, during my final year, I had a great opportunity to work for a South Korean design studio in Seoul. <coughs> I was an automotive designer, uh, intern, and uh, I'm lucky that the company trusted me, you know. And uh, it was a great opportunity to work with uh, the team producing two exterior projects, two interior and one seat. So that was a great experience. And imagine XP, I'm doing, I'm currently studying UX design. So I'll talk to you about that later. Nissan, so okay. So I'll be presenting you two of my automotive design projects. The first one is design, uh, sorry, the first one is Nissan, which is more of usability concept and the second one is styling project. So th now speaking about the Nissan, this is the brief. Um, the challenges which I had to face were, okay, I think that's too long, I'll summarize it for you. So the challenges which I had to face was the flexibility in design, okay? I had to make it flexible. And the flexibility is, I, it, the vehicle should carry 1.5 ton load as well as 10 people. Plus it can be more also. So depending, th that is flexibility. Plus it has to be cheap. It, uh, as you can see there, it's 4,000 to 5,000 US dollars. And uh, it has to be practical. So basically this is my idea. <clears throat> it's a frame kind of design. And uh, it's like a hollow framework where you can uh, customize according to your consumer needs, okay? And uh, as you can see there, it's a ho behind the vehicle, the rear part is a hollow frame. And uh, you can, insert whatever you want to put in, okay? Anything. So, see the, if, if, you, if, you, if you can see the possibilities, you can put a container which has kitchen appliances in it, you have a shop for you, you can sell burgers and make some money. And then you have bed, if you, can, if you put a container which has bed in it, and you have a trailer behind you, it's a mobile home. Plus, if you remove the container, there's plenty of space to accommodate some per persons, you know, like people, and it can become a public transport. And plus, following the brief, it can also add a container which is 1.5 ton load and becomes a load carrier. So this was my idea. And this is a scenario of uh, the load carrying scenario. So the, during my user, uh, <coughs> user research, one of the main problem I came to know was the farmers, what happens is his products is, all, is stored in his go down. So he has to carry that product all the way around to his vehicle and load it. Isn't that difficult? Come on. So. What I'm doing here is the, he can take the container itself to the go down and load it there. And when I showed this to the user, he was very happy, you know. This is something very simple, but yet very effective. And once he's done loading in the go down, he can get it back, put it in his vehicle, and it's ready to transport. Now, this is a scenario for the public transport. Plenty of space, you can accommodate people, and it's a public transport also. So what I improved on the design, making it more safe by making the surfaces more enclosed and giving protection to the user. And again, this is the same scenario for the new design where the topmost you can see the load carrying, load transport scenario. And below, you can pull down the seats and the person, the people can sit around, I think uh, eight to 10 people can sit comfortably and um, that's a public transport. So basically, I, can, I have successfully uh, accomplished the challenge where it also it can carry 1.5 ton load as well as 10 to 15 people. So what did I learn in this project? Thinking the practical aspect of automotive design, thinking about the business aspect of the importance of user research because user research helped me out, helped me in getting many, many, many ideas which will, which later helped me in the design process. Importance of flexible design thinking and the methods to follow flexible design thinking. Well, this is my second automotive project, which is Volkswagen. So 
What's Volkswagen? Volkswagen is nothing but it's the Volkswagen design language. They have very strong side view profile. Okay, and uh, I'm currently doing a traveler for Volkswagen. And uh, what's a traveler? Traveler is nothing but it's a vehicle for those people who wants to explore. You know, go to some places which other people have not gone. Just explore the cities. It's for adventurous people. So I went on with my project. And uh, the main motive in this brief was to get a nice side view profile for Volkswagen and get with some nice usability concept where the adventure, the one who is want to explore, can have a wonderful journey. So I'll directly jump to the final design sketches because I wanted to, I didn't want to go deep. So I'll, uh, so these are the final design sketches. And if you can see the main, uh, I've given a nice side view profile for Volkswagen, which is Volkswagen. Volkswagen is known for its side view profile. And uh, fine, it's an aesthetic project. But although it's an aesthetic project, it's also, I've given importance to usability. Okay? So if you can see the second image over there, there's a travel bag. Okay? So you can remove the travel bag, and which comes inbuilt in the car. So there's no need of other bags which he, he needs to put and all that. It, it, it's like the whole trunk can be removed. So people like photographers or something, they can easily put their tripods, their big bags of lenses and cameras, making their travel much more easier. And below that, you can see some perspective sketches of the same car. And these are some renders. So what did I learn in this uh, project? Same thing, it was understanding the brand value of the company and giving the aesthetic value to it. OK, so the main point. I've jumped, I've plunged into UX UI right now, okay? You might say, automotive designer, what is doing in UX UI? I get it. So this, let me tell you a small story, okay? So I was in uh, South Korea. So morning I used to come from Shao. I used to see my weather app. I don't know why, I just need to see it because I wanted to know what's happening later. You know, I wanted to know what's the day's weather status. So from there, I got an idea that, dude, who does this? It's fabulous. It's application and all that, it's just mind blowing. And I was like, I told to my roommate, dude, I want to be an app designer. Okay? I didn't know it's called UX designing. I like, I want to be an app designer. And by the way, the roommate was my Pakistani brother. I should stay with Pakistanis. And he was like, fabulous. Even he didn't know what is design. So he's like, okay, become an app designer. So I was like, fine. So what I did after that, every time I came from office, I, I had Photoshop in my laptop, so I was like, I have a lot of free time, man. Why not do something for myself, you know? So that is where I got introduced to UX design, app design, I don't know. UX design. So once I'm back from uh, South Korea, I, have, I was having coffee with my friend. So I'm like, dude, I want to be an app designer. So he's like, there's nothing called app designer, it's user experience designing, and it's a big field in India right now. And I'm like, wow, wow, why didn't no one tell me? And I went, I started researching, then I came to know some huge, huge important stuff, which like example, I came to know about uh, tangible designs, digital designs, which I got impressed. I just, I fell in love with it, that's it. And this was an article I came across, which was by Toyota. 1955, Toyota came up with a campaign called Respect for People. No, no rocket science. It's simple as that. What Toyota did was they understood the user needs, okay? And they gave what user wants. Brand was amazing. That year, Toyota did a lot of business. Just, they just did one chain. They understood user. And this was the mantra of UX. And I loved it. Uh. So this was the screenshot of some weather apps which I used to see in my room. I think this is, the, this is the Yahoo weather app. And what I want to do right now is, after I came back from office, I did a weather app. But from my perspective and my vision, so what was, the, I, 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 this was very technical for me, you know, I don't know why there's so much of data, there's so much of stats, why it's so much of technical. So now I'll come to my theme, making it less robotic and more humanistic. This is the same, same uh, weather status, but done by Google. So you can see there's so much of stats. So why can't you make it more fun? So there goes my theme called being less robotic. Hmm. I know you'll ask this question. Why a weather app? Fine, I know, but that's okay. But uh, I'll tell you, every day I was seeing a weather app, so I want to do something 
which I used every day, and it was weather app, so I did it. That's it. So this is the. Okay, this is the home screen. So no, no, no information about weather at all. It's just the city names, but introduced emotionally. Okay, Namaste New Delhi, and uh, Surat is a Gujarati, so why not use a Gujarati text? And uh, Chai Pate, Athens, Nihao, Beijing, Satsriyakal, Amritsar. So it's emotionally welcoming the user. Okay, why not? So I chose. Okay, I want to see the weather status of uh, New Delhi. I choose New Delhi. Good morning, New Delhi. Uh, it's hot 42. Okay, and uh, it's sunny. It's fine. And it can also. It obviously it has to say what's gonna what's going to happen later. It will stay hot, so chill. Okay, it might get cloudy later, but don't worry, I'll notify you. So what I did in the screen, nothing. I just showed you the weather status, but in a more humanistic way. You know, no data, no no bars, nothing. So if you see here, I think you can't. Oh my God, you have to give me some extension, huh? This is. Yeah, you can see the arrow down there. Okay, you press or pull the arrow up. Now you have the uh, weather update, weather status of the whole week. Okay, so it's nothing like uh, it's just the fonts decrease either ways, and the last two days are faded, and it's visible. So it gives a sense of rotation. Okay, and uh, it shows the weather status of the three days at a glance and the highs and lows. So now the same screen for same example for Athens. It's night, so sleep Athens, and it's cold 17. Okay, it's raining. Fine. So it will stay cool till morning. So cuddle and sleep. Okay. <laughs> Fine. So now if you want to see the temperature in Fahrenheit, you choose F, and uh, the temperature 17 turns into the Fahrenheit if if you're interested in, and. Uh, this is the same. If you pull the arrow key up, this is the same. This is the same uh, screen as I presented to you last uh, for New Delhi. And now, default city. Okay. So, what is default city? Um, the first box in the home screen is an auto detection app, uh, auto detected, which I think you, most of the apps has. But one problem which I which I have seen is, if people, if uh, you guys are traveling a lot, the first box is always changing. Today you're in Bangalore, so that's Bangalore. Tomorrow you go to Pune, that's Pune. But you don't know what's happening in your hometown. If, I, if I'm from Pune, I want to know what's happening in my hometown because my mom is staying there. I want to know. Okay. <laughs> I want to know. So, uh, so I've introduced make default city. How to make it? Press and hold the city which you want to make it make, make default. So the two options pop out, default and remove. You choose default and it gets default. Simple, right? <laughs> So what does this do? Now, one the, that box is default. Okay, how much ever you travel, London, New York, wherever you travel, you have your home screens, which hometowns weather status right there. No need to add anything. So it's right there. So, so that's it. So the same thing goes to the remove city. Choose the remove button. So and it's removed. So the screens during the daylight. Okay, so during morning, evening, afternoon, it's this color. And during late evenings, it's this color. I don't. I didn't want the user you know, when he's sleeping in his bed. I don't want him to open the screen and be like, oh my God, it's yellow. I probably might lose his sleep. So keeping it, keeping it some less dimmer, less brighter color like this. I like that one. <laughs> Wind. It will remain windy for a while. Why not go fly a kite? It's playing with the interest of the user. Okay, it's capturing the interest. Giving him some ideas. Go fly a kite. I might probably go and fly. So, conclusion. That's it. So, conclusion. What I want to do. Okay. Again, this thing. There's one more. Okay. What I want to do. I want to majorly aim on tangible designs. Airports. Okay. You're traveling to different airports. All the, all airports are different. There's no airport which is the same. All the airports are different. So once you're out of air, out of your airlines, where you go, where you going to go? 
Where is the baggage claim? Where is the customs? Where is, you, you, you would probably ask the pretty lady there, okay? That's it. So you don't know. So I need, this is a nice area where we can design a nice user experience for the passenger. And transportation. Since I'm from, since I'm from a transport background, I want to design something for cars, some ex user experience for cars and jetpacks. I don't know, you guys, I want jetpack. It's 2015, come on, I need jetpack. So some, some riding experience where I can fly from Pune to De Bangalore or something without any air tickets. And food recipe. This was a nice idea which when I came back from gym, I came home, kept my bag, I went to the kitchen, okay? I wanted to cook something. I have onions, tomatoes, everything I have, but what to cook? I don't know, I'm not a chef, I'm a student, I stay alone. So why not, there's a, there's a system where I can click the photos of the ingredients and there's a recipe for me for by the system. So I have used many recipe apps, but probably to make that one food I have to go run to the grocery to buy some stuffs. So why not there's a system which can create a recipe by the ingredients you have at home. I'm done. Thank you.